Hello and thank you very much for joining today. My name is Rodrigo Tears and I will be presenting some of my work on the seismic protection of multi-story rocking structures with inerters. Recent studies on seismic control of rocking structures have proposed the use of inerters, which are mechanical devices that develop resisting forces proportional to the relative acceleration between their terminals. In a previous paper, we have shown that these devices effectively reduce the frequency parameter of a rigid block. Accordingly, the rotation response of the inerter rocket structure can be represented by a larger block of the same slenderness as shown in this figure. This results in lower seismic demands and enhanced stability due to the well-known size effect of the rocking behavior. The dynamic response of multi-mass rocking structures equipped with inerters can be studied considering the system shown in this figure. In this model, the rocking structure is represented by n masses connected by elastic beam column elements of flexural stiffness EI and supported by a rigid base allowed to uplift. Two degrees of freedom per level are considered, namely lateral displacement and rotation. The structure is characterized by the frequency parameter PRI and has a grounded inerter connected at the first level. This equation shows that again, the inerter reduces the frequency parameter of the structure, although the effect in this case is less significant than in the rigid block case. The numerical model used in this study consists of three components, the deformable body, the rocking surface, and the underlying soil. Linear elastic beam column elements are used to represent the flexible structure, whereas a zero-length fiber section is considered for the rocking surface. A compression-only material is assigned to the rocking section, so the system is free to rotate about the pivot points. Energy loss during impact is incorporated by taking into account the energy radiated into the underlying ground. Accordingly, the structure is assumed to rest on a rectangular rigid foundation, while the soil underneath is represented by a set of vertical, horizontal and rotational springs and dashpots whose mechanical properties are determined according to standard machine vibration theory. This structural model was implemented in OpenSys and validated against experimental data published by previous authors. The figures showed the predicted base rotation response and elastic deformations at the top of these specimens obtained with the numerical model and compares them with the experimental and analytical results obtained by Trunier et al. One of the main difficulties in the prediction of the rocking time history responses is related to the fact that small errors in the rotation amplitude can lead to accumulative errors in the phase. This can be observed in the response of the 4 Hz specimen. Nevertheless, very good agreement is observed in the amplitude of the base rotation for the whole range of flexibilities under consideration. On the other hand, accurate predictions of the maximum elastic deformation response are also obtained for the more flexible oscillators. However, results show that both the numerical and analytical models tend to overestimate the elastic deformation as the structures become more rigid. The inerter is represented by two nodes connected through a rigid link and an angular mass j assigned to the rotational degree of freedom at node 1. In this way, the relative lateral displacement between the nodes is transformed into a rotation in node 1. The reactive force developed by the model is proportional to the horizontal relative acceleration between the nodes. The parameters of the model, j and rho, are then defined in terms of the inerters, mr, according to the equation presented here. Additionally, the possibility of adding a clutch to ensure the inerter can only oppose the motion of the structure is also incorporated through a simple discontinuous acceleration base function. In light of the lack of available experimental results on multi-mass rocking systems equipped with grounded inerters, the numerical models described in the previous slides were combined and compared with the analytical solution for single-mass rocking structures with inerters we developed in a previous paper. Excellent agreement between the two models is observed for the structures equipped with both single and clutched inerters. After validating the numerical models against experimental and analytical results, the response of multi-degree of freedom structures with and without inerters was compared under sign pulse excitations. In a first instance, a three-level system representative of a rocking wall of dimensions 2 meters by 9 meters was used as an example. The figures show that although the inclusion of the inerter reduces the maximum base rotation, it can also cause slight increases in the amplitude of the elastic deformations of higher stories with respect to the non-inerter case. This detrimental outcome stems from the backstay effect caused by the connection of the inerter in the first level. Nevertheless, in all three stories, the peak deformation remains considerably smaller than in the fixed base case. 
The introduction of the clutch, on the other hand, significantly improves the efficiency of the inerter in reducing the rotation response, although it does not translate into a significant alteration of the amplitude of the structural deformations. Similar conclusions can be obtained from the rocking spectra presented in the figures, which show the peak rotations, displacements and drifts for a wider range of frequency ratios. Although the improvements in the rotation response happen at the expense of inducing slightly larger elastic deformations, this drawback does not translate into higher drifts since the total lateral deformation is mainly controlled by the base rotation. The clutch, on the other hand, significantly improves the performance of the inerter device. On the other hand, the acceleration response of rocking structures is strongly influenced by impact. At the top, we have a history of rotations, and at the bottom, a history of accelerations for a harmonic phase motion with amplitude 1.5 g. In single mass rocking structures, conservation of horizontal kinetic energy ensures a smooth acceleration response. However, when multi mass rocking structures are considered, sudden and opposite changes in the velocity of the masses can generate, generate significant acceleration spikes while keeping the associated energy constant. This phenomenon is illustrated in the energy plot on the right. It can be seen here that while the total horizontal kinetic energy remains constant during impact, the kinetic energy of each mass does change. On the other hand, the close-up view on the left shows that the peak horizontal accelerations happen after impact has ended. This observation indicates that the maximum accelerations are not caused by direct action of the impact force, but by the high-frequency vibrations induced by it. As a result, even when subjected to low-frequency pulses, Impact forces can excite higher vibration modes of the uplifted system and generate significant acceleration demands. In these figures, the effect of the inerter on the acceleration response is examined. It is clear from the plots that when the inerter is included, the amplitude of the high-frequency oscillations is significantly reduced. The engagement and disengagement of the clutch inerter is indicated by the shaded areas in figure B. Although the inclusion of the clutch reduces the rotation response, with respect to the elastic deformations, the engagement-disengagement cycles can happen at inconvenient times, thus undermining the ability of the inerter to control the acceleration demands. Nevertheless, they remain considerably lower than the bare rocking case. When subjected to lateral excitations, the moment that can develop at the base of a rocking system is limited by the ablate threshold. However, bending moments above the base and shears throughout the structure can increase significantly after base uplift due to the response of higher modes. This was examined considering a nine-story rocking structure connected to an inerter at the first level. The influence of higher modes on the response of the bare rocking structure is evident in the envelope of the bending moment diagram, shown in the middle, as the highest demands are obtained around the third and fourth levels. Similarly, the approximately uniform distribution of accelerations along the height of the building, observed on the figure on the right, indicate that these demands are related to high-frequency vibrations associated with impact. The introduction of inerters helps to control the high-frequency response, causing an appreciable reduction of the horizontal acceleration demands and an approximately linear vertical decrease of the bending moments from the critical section at the first level, although it also increases the bending moments at this point due to the back stay effect. Once again, the addition of the clutch significantly improves the lateral drift response although at the expense of reducing the inerter's efficiency to control higher modes effects. Overall, our results allow us to conclude that the inerters can be used to improve the seismic performance of a wide range of rocking structures. Thank you very much once again for your attention, and please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.